G'day everyone, it's Bo from Growthwise. Today we're going to be running through how to fix up issues with annual leave. So quite often we find people have added an employee to zero as either a part-time or a full-time employee, but haven't actually added leave types for them. So this is going to run through how you can actually fix that issue. So old mate here has come to us and said that he thinks that his annual leave is not accruing. So I'm just gonna show you the first things that we need to check. So we're going to go into his uh, pay pay uh, template here and have a look on the employment tab. The first thing we're looking for is whether he's part-time or full-time. So we can see here that he's actually listed as a full-time employee. Obviously, if you have an employment contract or if you have agreements with your employees about where they sit in terms of casual part-time or full-time, obviously you would know that from there. But number one thing we normally check is just that this has been set properly. The next thing we wanna look at is generally most people will show under the leave tab that they've never actually had any leave types actually added into the into zero at all. So that's the case here. So we can see that old mate, even though he is full time, there's never been a leave type associated with his uh, pay template here. So what we need to do is click on assign default leave types. So we can see we've now got an annual leave and a personal and carers leave section. If you click on these, you can see how it's actually being calculated. So we can see here that the leave calculation is based on ordinary, ordinary earnings, which is basically just saying how many hours that old mate works, we're going to actually use that to figure out what leave's been accrued. And then under personal and carer's leave, we've got the same thing. Now, zero does have other methods, so you can do a fixed amount each period. If you want to just say that this is the amount of leave someone gets, that's fine. But in this case, we find that this is probably the, uh, the easier way of... Um, doing the leave accruals. Obviously, you'll need to look at your awards or you'll need to look at your employment agreements to make sure that what you're doing here makes sense in, in accordance with what they say. But for the purposes of this exercise, we're going to run through fixing this particular issue. So we now have assigned the leave types and we can see that personal carers leave has been assigned as well. So if we now look at pay slips, what we're trying to ascertain here was when's the most recent time that old mate's been paid. So we can see we've got two different pay cycles. We've got March and we've got April. So the most recent time that he's actually been paid up to is in April. And we know because leave types are never assigned in zero that there was no actual leave balance there in the first place. The next thing that we're going to need to do is if we go into a reports, we're going to search for the report payroll activity summary. and we want to look at old mate. We know from the pay cycles that he's only been working for this financial year, so we'll just use that date range. Obviously, if someone's had this happening for a longer period, you'll need to look at their start date and the most recent pay run cycle that's been ran. So now we can see that when we do the payroll activity summary, we've got the hours for the public holidays and also his ordinary hours. So if you remember before, the leave type that we had set up is actually going to be based on ordinary hours. So that means for any ordinary hours that have worked, leave should have accrued for. So the next thing we're looking at is what's the total amount of hours that have been worked or that leave should accrue for. And again, you'll need to look at awards and make sure you're doing this correctly. But in general, in Australia, at least, if you take annual leave, there is annual leave that accrues. If there's sick leave taken, there's annual leave that accrues. If there is public holidays, there's annual leave that accrues. So again, you'll need to check your awards, make sure that you are doing it in accordance with those. But for the purposes of this exercise, we're going to assume that all of the hours on this page are hours that should have had leave accrued. So what we wanna get basically is the total. So if you don't know already, you can actually do these calculations in the bar of Chrome. So 1200.8 hours is the amount of hours that old mate should have had leave accruing for. So now that we have that figure, the next thing that we wanna do is go into pay employees. We're gonna to go to add a pay run and then pick unscheduled pay run. He's on the monthly pay cycle. It's this financial year and the most recent pay run that he had ran for him recently was April. So if we click on April, when we go into here, we're gonna see that old mate's not selected, but we're going to tick him. And then this is the next part that we need to look at. Obviously it's gonna bring in all of the public holidays here, but for the purposes of this exercise, mainly what we need to do is just make sure that we have 1200.8 hours here and then make the rate zero. And you'll notice that what should happen 
is zero then recalculates what the annual leave and the personal carer's leave should have been based on the total amount of hours. Now, at this point, you can post this pay run with zero dollars in it. That is what, what some people do. Now, if you do that, you'll just need to be aware that when you rerun reports about hours in the future, it's going to obviously add another 1200.8 hours. So the most appropriate way of doing this is we can say, in the payroll message down here, accruing leave from start date based on 1200.8 work hours. Now, what I'm going to do is just copy these figures here. And obviously now we're going to get rid of this because we don't want to add that to our other reporting. If we click on annual leave, we can then say don't calculate the leave accrual because we know what the figure should be. And we can just type in that 92.3699. Same thing for personal and carer's leave. We're not going to uh, calculate it because we already did that before. And so now we've actually added the accrual in. There's no ordinary hours. At this point, we're going to save the pay run. close down here. Obviously he has a message on his payslip that will be accessible via the payslip or zero me about when the leave accrual occurred. And then we can click on post pay run. So obviously there's zero earnings in this because we don't need to affect earnings. We don't need to affect tax or super. We're purely just accruing the leave that should have accrued. So now if we go back into employees and we click on old mate, we go to his leave tab, we can now see that the leave that he should have had accrued from the start has now been accrued up till now. So now that that's done, and we know that it's based on ordinary hours, the next time a pay cycle is ran for old mate, the annual leave's going to accrue as it should have from the start, but this way you can fix it if you didn't have it happening in the, in the, in the uh, first instance anyway. If you've got any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment, but hopefully this helps someone that may have had this issue in the past. This we find is one of the better ways of doing the adjustments because it's transparent to the employee. One of the ways that we also see this done is people will just come in and change the opening balance. Although that is one way of doing it, we strongly don't recommend doing it that way. And the reason for that is there's no transparency back to the employee unless you add an email or something like that or to other people that use zero. Whereas if you do the leave balances as we've, as we've just done, they'll show up in other types of reports. So if you look at leave accrual report, you'll be able to see that 92 hours suddenly being accrued and the pay slip that it associates with. So that's why we do it the way that we've just shown before. Um, it just seems to be the most transparent way on both sides of the, the spectrum from the employee and the employer. So yeah, I hope that's helped someone out there. If that has helped you, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel so we can keep doing more of these. Thanks.